Welcome back to the channel. In this one, I want to review this little budget tablet. Now, my benchmark so far is the Aldo Cube iPlay Mini 50 Pro. I think I've got the order right there. Recently created a video on this and it's done pretty well. I recommend you go watch that if you haven't already done so. This is a Helio G99 powered tablet and it's powerful enough to do gaming and emulation up to PS2. Maybe not all PS2, but certainly a decent amount of PS2. This, however, is the Headwolf F-Pad 3. Now, while this cost £124 when I bought it, this only cost £65. So, can a tablet that costs half the price match or at least get close to similar performance or different for different games as the Aldo Cube? Now, it's not a gaming tablet, but then I wouldn't say the G99 was a gaming tablet, you know, the iPlay 50 Mini Pro. But there's some really big similarities between these two tablets. So the first thing I'll do is I'll just go around the Aldo Cube again just to show it's got an 8.4 inch, uh, 1920 by 1200 screen. Uh, it's an aluminium construction, now I've got a little stand on mine. Uh, it's quite square edged. The Aldo Cube has a speaker grill on the bottom and the charging port is on the top. It has a, on the left side an eject point where you can take out the SIM card and the micro SD card. And on the other side it has a power button and volume up and down. And it's a good little tablet. The Headwolf F-Pad 3 is also an 8.4 inch tablet. It's also 1920 by 1200. It has the camera location in the same place. It has two speaker grills on the bottom and the charging point on the bottom rather than on the top. It also has nothing on the top except for a little microphone so a slot for it. Uh, it's also got the strange location for the earphone socket you know, sticking out the side. It also has an eject point at exactly the same side, albeit the eject pinholes at the opposite end, and that holds a SIM card and a micro SD card. And on the other side, it also has the volume up and down and the power button, but again, mirrored, so not exactly the same, but very, very, very similar. So, can this little thing come anywhere close to the performance of the Aldo Cube? Well, the simple answer is that kind of depends on what you're doing. When it comes to surfing the web using you know Chrome or whatever, it's it's a perfectly snappy little browsing device. If you're watching or consuming any video content on demand, and um, we'll cut to that just now. Now, if you're watching any video on demand, it's actually pretty decent. Here we're watching a little bit of Disney here, just for a quick cut through. Colours are pretty good. Um, this is not an HD, I don't think this, but it's an older film. So we'll cut forward to something a bit more modern, shall we? So here we have something a little bit more modern from Disney and as you can see the colour reproduction is actually really nice. It's bright, it's vibrant, it's, uh, it's in HD. Very good. So for watching video content, it's a great little device. We'll fire up some um, YouTube and we'll just check Stats for Nerds on that. Now as you might see this is only running at 1080p, that's the highest resolution this will run at when you're streaming from Netflix but there's no frames dropped. It actually looks really decent, and I think that's about all I need to say about YouTube streaming. And now here we're looking at some comic book reading, and as you can see, it looks really nice. It's crisp, it's responsive, really easy to change between pages. There's really no delay in loading up the next page. So I'm using my favourite comic book reading app, this is C Display EX, and uh, you can scroll left and right with this, or you can scroll up and down, and it's a really snappy app, and works really well with this, uh, this tablet. You can pinch to zoom, and really it's crisp, it's easy to use. And I think what we'll do now is we'll cut over to using my DSP D8 controller, and we'll do some Android emulation. So here we are, first up, let's do a bit of uh, Horizon Chase, and... Um, as you'll see here, it looks fantastic. There's no settings to tweak, it just runs like a dream. Really responsive, colours look great. Sound-wise, it's perfectly fine. And uh, absolutely just what I was expecting, to be honest, with this game. Now, unfortunately, at this point of my video, the uh, the audio didn't record when I was doing all my game footage. So I'm just having to voice over. So yeah, unfortunately, you can't hear that the audio's nicely in sync. Uh, however, just take my word, it is actually running really well. Um, I could have recorded the footage again, but that seemed kind of pointless. 
Uh, I'll let you just watch a little bit more of this footage, just so you can see how well it performs, and then we'll cut over to a little bit of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Okay, so here's a little bit of Shredder's Revenge, and again, game is running absolutely perfectly. Now, these were both lightweight games, but um, yeah, look how, look how vibrant those colours are, really pops, and plays really well. Now, this is kind of what you'd expect, it's an Android game, you know, it's made, designed for phones, so, you know, this tablet's got the same chipset as you'll get in a weakish Android phone, and it runs really well. Now, if you just want a tablet for surfing the web, maybe watching a bit of video, reading a few comic books and some light gaming, so far this has proven absolutely perfect. Okay, so up next we've got a little bit of Stardew Valley, which, you know, another lightweight game, but it's a popular game on Android, and again, this runs absolutely perfect. It looks really good on this display. The colours really jump out, don't they? And just a little reminder, this is an 8.4 inch display, which is 1920 by 1200 pixels, so it, it really has the opportunity to pop here. And in fact, I could play this game for quite a while. In fact, my son will probably play it more than I will, but it's fantastic how well it plays. Now, let's cut over to a little bit of Genshin Impact. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't get the controller working this time. The um, app that I used to get it working, well, it just needs a little bit of configuring, and I wanted to just get this video done. So, I'm using on-screen controls, and many people would use on-screen controls. So, as you can see here, it's um, running at the lowest visible preset, um, and... It's targeting 30 FPS, and it seems to be doing okay. I mean, it's not the best, but it's fairly playable. Well, as you can see here, it's you know it's, it's fairly responsive. I think that was um, a pretty reasonable example of a game like Genshin Impact. Now let's switch over to some PS2 emulation. This is really going to test it. So I'm not going to test too many apps here, we're just going to test God of War 2, this is really testing it. And we're having to run it at a 0.75 render resolution, so we're below native. But as you can see, it's semi-playable, it doesn't run at full frames, but it doesn't feel too terrible. At a push, you could play PS2 games like this. Now, the lighter weight games will run at 1x resolution, by the, in the most part, and they'll generally run it pretty close to their full frame speed. However, that's not where this tablet excels. We'll cut over to some emulation that I think works best on this little tablet. And as you've just seen there, my battery's getting a little bit low on this tablet, but we're just going to carry on emulating anyway, like a true example. And here we're testing out 3DS emulation. And uh, this is again just running at native uh, resolution. I quite like this because on my 3DS, I've got the original one, the screens are quite small. And you are straining a bit to look at those small screens. And this you can scale up to what's well, close to a 7 inch main screen and it still looks pretty good it's very playable, it's not quite 100% uh, speed drops down about 95 I think sometimes, but it still feels pretty playable to me and now this is using the Citra MMJ emulator which obviously you can't get anymore unless you hunt around for it or already had a copy but I still think it was worth testing this here so that, that sums up the testing of this tablet. I didn't want to do a big in-depth uh, test here. Really, I purchased this tablet for video watching and maybe a little bit of light surfing for my partner. Uh, I didn't really expect much when it came to gaming and I have to say it's um, it's 
kind of blown me away a bit. It does pretty well at Android emulation. And when it comes to emulated uh, games, well, it'll play all the old consoles, no problem. It struggles a little bit with PS2. Uh, it won't do any GameCube. It really isn't strong enough to do GameCube. Uh, I tested out F-Zero and it just didn't even record any footage because it was just so slow. However, I was a little bit impressed that it could do 3DS as well as it could. So if you're looking for a really budget tablet, then the Headwolf F-Pad 3 might be an option. Uh, if nothing else, for watching your favourite TV shows and reading some comic books, it's a cracking little tablet. Anyway, thanks for watching and I think I'll sign off at this point. Bye for now.